All right, guys, so welcome to another video. A lot of you have been requesting a review for this particular update that is MIUI Mint BGST MIUI 13 port based on the latest MIUI 13 beta. Today is the time we're going to review it. I've been using it since the last two days and please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now, what you see over here is the Poco X3 Pro updates group, which is available on Telegram. We also have a channel on Telegram, which has more than 1800 members, and you can get all sorts of information with people with similar devices there. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Now let's begin with the review. So let's see what this particular update brings to the loved Poco X3 Pro. Now this is MIUI Mint BGST MIUI 13 version 22.1.19. This is of course a port from the device called Redmi 9T. This ROM will work on YU and Bima both. This is based on Android 11. The build date is the 24th of January 2022. Now you do have the download link for the ROM and you have a patch that you have to flash to get MTP to work. Now let's see what the changelog is over here. Ported from Redmi 90, Redmi Note 9 4G line, based on Xiaomi.eu 21.1.19 weekly, decrypted by default, SE Linux enforcing, multi-languages, full read-write system, debloated some apps, add status bar style from Wolf OS. We're gonna look at that in this particular video. Fixed some issue and the full changelog as always will be in Indonesian language. So we are not gonna have a look at that. Now it does say include G apps, safety net should be passed. Don't PM the dev report bug on this, this, this. Now let's go to the home screen. So the good thing over here is this is full fledged MIUI 13. That is a good thing. It does come with a very, very few minor bugs, which might not be a deal breaker for you, but I will notify you nonetheless. Now, the good thing here is that this is not only MIUI 13, the Mint VGST team have actually gone ahead and themed the icons and the UI in their own style, which is sort of a love it or leave it affair in my opinion. And we will talk about the performance in a bit. Now, if you see over here, the control center style looks a little different. The auto brightness can be enabled or disabled. Whenever you go ahead and enable or disable any particular icon, you will see that it is colorful. It is sort of a transparent UI is what they have. Uh, not really a fan of this because a lot of things over here start to say disappear in the background, depending on the wallpaper. And on the home screen, you do have your standard MIUI 13 icons with a new look. To the left, I have enabled Google Feed, which works absolutely fine. It does stutter sometimes because this is a port ROM, but most of the time it is smooth. It is way better than what you would experience on say a stable or a stock MIUI 12.5.7. So yes, the Google Feed is working absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. Now, if you press and hold over here, or if you pinch, you will see that you go to the launcher settings, but on first, you know, when I did it for the first time, there was a slight jitter. Now, that is my concern with this particular ROM. It's working absolutely fine. There are no major issues, but the stutters and jitters are there everywhere around the user interface. And let me show you that we are actually running in 120 Hertz mode. The refresh rate is set to 120. So that is working fine. Now, another thing that I did mention in the previous video is you also get an option of 90 Hertz. So now to show you that 90 Hertz is working, let's actually go to developer options and let's go to the option called show refresh rate. Let's see here, there you go. So as you can see, now it is working on 90 Hertz. It's more or less the same. It's a little more smooth, a little less smooth compared to 120 Hertz. So we will keep it in 120 Hertz all the time because hey, this device has a big, big uh, battery and the battery backup should not be a problem even if you run this particular phone at 120 Hz all day long. Now you get a standard UI over here of MIA 13 along with the app drawer. You do have your widgets over here. You have your Google search bar at the bottom. You don't get assistant shortcuts, of course, because this is MIUI that we are talking about, right? Now, if you further go to the wallpaper menu, there is one bug that I have encountered over here. If you're using any of these live wallpapers or these static wallpapers over here, you won't have an issue, but if you go to say any of these MIA 13 wallpapers, it'll say that it is downloading and it'll crash. Now, I really don't know why that is happening. I've tried all sorts of different MIA 13 wallpapers, but for some reason it's crashing. So that is one feature that is having issues not working. Now, even if you go to the widgets menu, you will see that you don't have the MIUI 13 widget look over here. 
The look over here is more like MIUI 12. So that is something you should take care of and be wary of. Now, if you go to settings, you will see that you have the full blown MIUI 13 system launcher, which does have the option of don't show text and all those small things that they added. You do have an option to arrange recents horizontally. Talking about recents, the recents UI is also pretty smooth and you do get a bunch of options just similar to MIUI 12.5. But in my opinion, this ROM is brilliant when it comes to performance, but the UI jitteriness is a little more compared to what it was in the initial port. I don't know why that is, but I've been using this ROM since the last two to three days. Now let's actually go to settings over here. You will see that you get the standard uh, MIUI beta layout with a you know different customization option over here and uh, let's actually go to all specifications. You will see that it has all the system information and this is Android version 11 with a January security patch. MIUI Mint 13 is what they are calling this. The kernel of course is the perf kernel so nothing to you know mention there. Now if you go to additional settings you will see that the option of RAM extension is somehow missing. Now that is a little weird but let's go ahead and talk about the other options over here. SIM cards and mobile networks, Bluetooth connectivity, everything is the same. Wallpaper and personalization is something that you saw. So let's see here. If you go to library from here, go to these wallpapers. Right. So it is still crashing if you go to it from a different menu as well. You do have always on display and lock screen. Always on display works absolutely fine, but I would not recommend you to use it because hey, this is a LCD panel and you would drain a lot of battery if you use always on display because it will activate the entire display all the time. And that's not going to give you great battery life. Now, if you go to sound and vibration, you will see that you do have a lot of options over here and some additional options like profile video for incoming calls, additional settings, sound effects. So all these things are added. I'm not saying that MIUI Mint team or Mint VGST team is not doing a good job. They are actually doing a very good job at customizing this particular ROM. Even if you go to status bar over here, you will see that look, look over here in the status bar. Okay. So there you go. You do have different styles of status bar, which they mentioned that they have imported from Wolf OS. But for me, the basic one works just fine. You do have a ton of other customization options. Some are there from stock and some have been added. Now, if you go to display, you do have all sorts of standard options. Nothing to write home about over here. You do have a fingerprint scanner and face unlock that are working absolutely fine. You do have your security app over here, which is updated. So you do get the game turbo and uh, the video toolbox, which is the updated one. So if you actually go to special features over here, you will see that you have game turbo and you have the sidebar. So this is basically the sidebar which was introduced with MIUI 13 and uh, that's what they are selling as a new feature to global MIUI 13 users. Now you do have floating windows, second space and all these options which are present and they work absolutely fine. So, you know, all in all moving from the first port to this particular port, the UI is more sluggish, but let's talk about the important factors like safety net for that matter. So safety net will fail, you know, you will have to go ahead and install the latest Majisk and uh, go ahead and do the settings over there. I did notice that the Play Store certification was pa passing Widewine L1 certification is present in DRM info. So no problem there. Now let's talk about the benchmark numbers for which we will go to the gallery application. Now the good thing is the gallery application here is the latest updated one. So if you look at the CPU throttle test, average score 176, 799 GIPS, which is not really high, but it's decent. And the CPU throttle to 89% of its max performance. Now let's go to Antutu benchmark over here and see what numbers we got there and what was the heating and battery, you know, percentage drop. So 587.017, this is about 20 to 25,000 more than what this particular device scores on the stock ROM. So good performance there. And uh, moving on, let's talk about Geekbench real quick. So let's go to the Geekbench historical score. 769 single core, 27600 multi core. So this is a really good score as far as Geekbench is concerned. Now the other things like, you know, proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, these things are working fine. The gyroscope is working absolutely okay. I did not experience any ghost touch issues, but be aware that I have never experienced ghost touch issues on this Poco X3 Pro. So all in all, if you ask me, this is a usable ROM. If you can, you know, manage some stutters here and there, the 120 Hertz on this doesn't really feel like 120 Hertz. It feels like, you know, 90 Hertz at the most. 
so i would appreciate if they could do something else to make the rom more smoother although i understand this is based on beta you are better off using the previous port which did have a couple of things missing but it was working way better compared to this rom as far as the ui smoothness is concerned now the gaming experience on this well you will have a dedicated gaming review but let me tell you the gaming experience on this was pretty decent although the device was heating up i would not say overheating but it was sort of uncomfortable for me to hold so you will get constant fps you will have good screen recording and all those things but yes be prepared to you know probably wear gloves or something and play because it becomes a little uncomfortable to play while holding the device which is doing 75 degrees on the processor and 47 48 degrees on the battery and i did test uh, bgmi call of duty mobile genshin impact and i will give you a full blown dedicated gaming review soon on this at the same time special note for poco x3 pro users a dedicated video on breaking like what should be done what should not be done what is the cause of breaking is coming tomorrow or day after so stay tuned for that let me know in the comment section what do you think about this review until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care happy rom flashing